What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Nothing? Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I don't want to insult him. I'm running out of threats to get you talking, Jake. And frankly, I don't want things to get violent. I've come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in the dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door, that red one there. All right, you stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. That got it? Screw you! A promising night indeed. <laughs> I'm guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. Would he even notice if I got in? <laughs> Does he need a shotgun to deal with suppliers? Maybe it leads to the basement. if O'Leary doesn't know I've been here. Should we go find a basement then? A bit too high to climb if the basement I'm looking for were in that building. Can I climb the trash can? There's a ladder there. Could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? By not standing on it. What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy watching TV inside the restaurant. A red panda, I think. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't recall any panda waiters. Are you done? What do you think? From the back door, I can see a hall that might lead to the basement. Does that sound familiar? O'Leary sometimes comes from a hallway. But who knows if it's that one? What's taking you so long? You want to switch places? There's a trap door on the ground, right by the restaurant. Does that sound familiar? Huh? The... The restaurant or the trap door? Okay. Forget it. <laughs> Check out that graffiti. You're in On Leon Tong territory. Wow. I thought the Tong Wars had ended years ago. Maybe someone nostalgic just got bored. Damn Chinese mafias. Yeah. American mafias are infinitely better, no doubt. Wow. I need you to go to the front door and ring the bell. All right, is there a bar in that alley? Have you been drinking? Count to 30, ring the bell, then run for the car. Got it? Whoa, you better send a bunch of Italians my way after this. So, now what are you gonna do? 
I'll open the door with my lock picks. Once I'm in, I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. Oh. Guess I'll take the door. The lock on that door was not your standard model. I had to give it my all. Now I'm getting tutorials? Has to be it, right? Crap. That's a door. Ah, who cares about collectible? Isn't this it? God. Alright. I'm gonna be trapped here in the dark forever. I don't understand why that's not the light switch. <sighs> oh, there it is. But it won't let me... press it? I don't understand. Oh, no, 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 not now! <sighs> Some answers only come to you when it's far too late. I had two answers right in front of me. Am I using the light source wrong? There's a switch right here! I don't understand why I can't just select it. Oh my god. Didn't it just tell me to find a light light switch? some frozen bodies. Hmm. There's one on each table, except this one. Hmm. The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but... 
Maybe word got out about his condition. Does O'Leary have a network of pals? Something on the floor. Wow. I didn't realize you could place so many bets on a single baseball game. A little thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? Computers. 16 days until the fight. Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. Uh, okay then. Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. It looks like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute. Did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? Gambling password. <gasps> An aquarium. Oh, too bad it's a bit blurry. Could that be Ireland? A crossler? The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Password somewhere. I'd say that's Ireland too. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't me. possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about 20000 in a drawer. We can't fix that. Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed. I hope I never become the object of O'Leary's obsession. It's just full painting. Calm down. The painting concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? Um, who's Timothy? I'd spy on, uh... Yeah, I guess. In 
Bobby Yale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war, which he came Touch back football. from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend? The incorruptible police commissioner? I'm going to check. To be honest, if Smirnov had anything to hide, I'd rather not know. No, I wanted to see. Ugh. It's just too fast. Can I check on it again? We shall never know. Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Me. Oh, I'm <laughs> just turning the light on. I guess that's everything. Oh, wait. Don't tell me these four paintings have four hidden compartments. Luckily or not, files N through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. Dunn's integrity was legendary, even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said. Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him snooping around.
The report on Yale's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, their rivalry went way back. So much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. Check the aquarium. It's more important. <laughs> Jeez, come on. Hey, that's me. Maybe that's O'Leary's obsession. Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. Guess I'm done. Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jimmy? Here it is, middle of the night. Good view of the room at all. 